hacking essentially is um, a process by which anyone will gain uh, unauthorized access to your identity online and to be able to access your assets. And thanks for joining us on today's edition of Vistec on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. If you use a computer or a mobile device, then you are prone to internet predators or what we call the hackers. These hackers use unauthorized means to access information on our devices. But the question is, how do we prevent these hackers from having access to our information? My colleague Maoli Aholumega sits with a data protection expert as he educates us on how to protect our data on the internet. If you own a digital device, then one must bear in mind it comes with many risks of hackers trying to access critical information. These hackers use unauthorized means to acquire critical information that could be damaging to an individual or organization. On this week's edition of BizTech, I speak with an expert to understand the dangers of hacking and what hackers can do to your critical information. My name is Mali Aholemeka. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on this week's edition of BizTech. My guest is Kwesi Kofi from DataWare, and we're going to be talking about the dangers of hacking and how to tackle the issue. Kofi, well welcome to BizTech. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Thank you. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Great. Yeah, so for those who don't really know what hacking is, can you mm. briefly explain what exactly internet hacking is? Okay. So um, for, for, for any person... Um, you would traditionally um, have a presence online. So it could be a social media presence, it could be um, accessing your bank details or your bank account over the internet. So a, a lot of people exist online, right? Even though there, there's a large uh, segment of the organization so, um, of society that's um, outside of the internet. Um, so hacking essentially is um, a process by which anyone will gain uh, unauthorized access to your identity online and to be able to access your assets. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, assets is one of, uh, identity is one of your assets. Mm -hmm. It could be a bank account. It could be an email, you know, uh, account. For businesses, it could be their digital environment, so their servers office computers or their documents as well. So any undue or unauthorized access to any of these assets um, is, can be termed as hacking. Yeah, so for my little research, I understand hackers have very various forms that they go about the activity of hacking right. into. Right. Well, I, for, I know fi about phishing, mm -hmm. right? But what, what are the other forms of hacking for that, that okay. is being deployed here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, these bad actors or these hackers mm. um, can be categorized into you know three main areas. Mm. So we have black hat, okay. and then there is white hat, Why and then <laughs> so it's yeah. gray, okay. and there's gray gray hat. So I mean, uh, you know, when we say something is black, you know what it, it denotes. Black. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> if something is white. What it denotes, and in between we have gray because nothing in this world is really black and white. <laughs> <laughs> so. For black hat hackers, these are purely bad actors okay. acting on their own, trying to get, you know, and do access to your accounts. 
It could be in ways that you give it to them mm. or in ways that they try and figure out what your passwords are mm. and gain access to and gain access to your your account. Mm. So those are the the black hats. Okay. Then there's the white hat. So the white hat hackers are professionals who are offering a service. Okay. So there are companies who have online portals, who have softwares, who have devices, and all of these run on software. So there are people who have a skill set in trying to find vulnerabilities. Mm. So they employ these people to try and find vulner vulnerabilities. So these people are like third party mm. um, consultants um, who try and find vulnerabilities and report on them so that these uh, companies can you know, fix them. And then the gray ones are in between, usually people with a bad, you know, criminal history, mm -hmm. or they could be people who just attempt to find vulnerabilities in systems and report on them so that, you know, it becomes public knowledge and people are more, um, you know, aware of when they're interacting with these systems. Okay. Yeah, so Kosi, you've, you are a data expert with DataWare. What specifically does DataWare do? Okay. okay. So what DataWare does is we help businesses okay monetize their data. Okay. So when we say monetize, we don't mean selling your data, mm. right? But as you transact with your customers, you generate some information or some data which is stored somewhere. Okay. Now, as a going concern, you are able to generate insights about these customers, okay. which will inform what kind of products or services you can offer them. Mm. So one typical example is with chain prediction. Chain prediction. Yes. Okay. So churn is like the probability that a customer leaves. Okay. So using data and data analytics, you can predict which of your customers are likely oh, to leave. To yes, are likely right. to leave. So that's one application. So if you know this information, you can leverage that and offer them additional maybe promotions or discounts to keep them. Okay. And with also recommendations. So you mentioned based on your customer behavior, mm. you can tell which kind of products or services they are likely to you know to to, to subscribe to mm. so you offer that and this recommendation happens a lot with like youtube and all of these e-commerce platforms based on your demography based on your past you know usage they can tell what kind of products you like mm. now once they recommend that to you and you buy that then that means additional revenue for the business so okay. you're making money as a business wow. so we help um companies to leverage data mm. gain insights to make decisions Okay. to generate re more revenue. Very interesting. Yeah, so now let's come to, you, you're a data expert, so let, let's come to the numbers, especially the incidents of hacking. Mm. Is there a rise or are we seeing uh, maybe it's balanced or we are seeing a low? Well, definitely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always rising. It's always rising because now the, the increased levels of interactions. Mm. Um, initially, as society evolved, we're connecting places they were connecting people when we went mobile and we were connecting devices. The next phase is that we are connecting humans to the digital well, world. That's yeah. what we call the metaverse. Yeah, metaverse. yeah. so all yeah. of yeah, these. And all the, yeah. all the yes, yeah. decentralized systems and all of that. So all of these increased interactions means, you know, anytime anything increases, the prevalence of something increases, right? Mm. So all of these increased interactions, it could be between devices, between humans and devices, mm. between humans and humans, between systems and systems. All of this increased interaction means a lot of traffic mm. bouncing around. Okay. So depending on the skill set of the organization, in terms of developing those systems, vulnerabilities may arise mm. and people attempt to uh, find these vulnerabilities and take undue advantage. So um, as at this year, mm. It's estimated that the average cost of a data breach is in the region of four million dollars. Wow. That's yes. a lot of money. Yeah, that's 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 annually, no, or just just per, a year per data breach. Okay. So on wow. average, when you take all organizations in the world, and this was reported by IBM, that is a lot of that's money. That's a lot. So, <laughs> what went into the computation of this average is the cost, mm. you know, of the data breach. Like for example. If somebody hacks through a ransomware, so ransomware is essentially like they hack into your system, they encrypt your data, mm. and they say, pay me this amount, okay. and let me give you the access to it, back to it. Wow. Or the cost of loss of business if a company is not able to operate because they have been hacked. Mm. And then the cost of 
restoration, okay. right? So there are a number of ways that businesses can, uh, you know, I'm sure we come to that part of the conversation where they can safeguard and even as individuals as well. Yeah. So yeah, those are, that's what the number look like. Interesting right. revelation that you made about, I'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Right. I've been speaking with Kwesi Kofi from DataWare and we've been talking about hacking and the dangers of hacking and how to tackle the issue. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome up on our break on BizTech. I've been speaking with Kwesi Kofi from DataWare and we've been talking about the dangers of hacking and how to tackle them. Kwesi, mm -hmm. I've been learning a lot from you. I mean, mm -hmm. what is really striking for me is the organizational cost mm -hmm. of hacking on companies. And I want you to touch further mm -hmm. on that. You mentioned a figure of $4 million. Mm -hmm. That's per hacking. Yeah. So per let's say we have um, 10 organizations. That is quite a lot of money. Yes, but I mean, this is an average. Mm -hmm. So, an yeah, average. when you take the spectrum of the size of companies, mm -hmm. on, on an average, yeah. this is how much it will cost for, for any business. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, even beyond the monetary aspect, mm -hmm. things like your company credibility. Mm -hmm. So, if, let's say, somebody, you, have, you operate an e-commerce platform, mm -hmm. Uh, let me not mention the e-commerce platform yeah. there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, like say, something something dot com, yeah. and, and you sell stuff, and somebody comes and they put in their, their credit card information or their card details, mm. and that card details is used to transact somewhere. I mean, the the loss in confidence alone, you know, you can't quantify that because yeah. you don't know what they'll be out there saying about mm. your brand or things like that. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, in terms of organization, from the perspective of organizations, the cost sometimes goes beyond goes yeah, beyond. the monetary aspect. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to come to, to a very key point. So let's say I'm, I'm having this mobile phone, okay, mm -hmm. and perhaps I see a message pop up, any message from a, a service provider or something. How will I know I'm being hacked mm -hmm. without even like having to click on the link? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so... Um, let's let's put it in two phases. Okay. When you know there's an attempt, mm. ongoing attempt to gain access to your account, okay. and then when your account has actually been compromised. Okay. So let's take the first one. Mm. So when attempts are ongoing, you know, um, let's say for example, let's use a bank, your bank account, right? Online, uh, online uh, banking account. Um, some of these platforms, once um, an attempt is made, you get a notification. Okay. So you can get an email notification that, you know, your account, yeah, it was... It usually happens with a Gmail. Yes, yes, you get, yes, you get yeah. yeah. So even when you're not, if you're not the one who yeah. did it, and then you get a notification that somebody yeah. is trying to... Or it sends you to the spam. Yes. yes. <laughs> you're like, hey, tell <laughs> fire on the mouth. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So, yeah, when you get those notifications and you know you're not the one that initiated those... Um, uh, activities then you know that there's something going on mm. sometimes as well you have like you said you receive a link yeah. say click on it Just and this can email. be to your email or even to your whatsapp so you have to be very careful what so links very enticing mails to us well. yes yeah. you're like hey you're one hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yes <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so you want a hundred thousand dollars click yeah. on this link then hey because what happens is that when you and those are phishing emails okay. Oh, okay. once you click on those on, on that link mm. you, a, there can be a script in the background that will install something on your on mm. your computer then you've given you've given access, access to somebody, to, to somebody yeah, without, without realizing it. Okay. Sometimes too, you click on it and then you lose on some strange um, web page, and then they ask you to enter some details. Mm. You know, uh, just about uh, some months back, the, a bank sent out you know information. You know, when we we're trying to do this national ID reconciliation yes. with bank accounts, yeah, yeah. there the was yeah, there was a post that went out. With some some links, if yes, you are yes. with this bank, yes, the bank click on it. it. Yeah, and they said no. Yes. This, and it was also tweeted that. by the cybersecurity authority. Mm. So sometimes these links look very close to the actual. To the original. Source. Yeah. So let's say um, you save with Bank A. Okay. You see that their email will come. Let's say um, um, let's say relationship at bank A dot com. Okay. 
But what these attackers will do is that they can just change one word. So instead of maybe bank A, they'll do it bank AA.com. Mm. They will have that domain and then they will send it. And if you are not very observant, you click on it, you think, oh, you think they are to your, your bank, bank and then you put in your details and yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that's, that's, how, that's how it works. With. So now, how, how, do organ how are organizations going to solve this issue? Because it keeps coming up almost every single day. We, we keep seeing the incidents coming in. Sometimes you, you open your mail, you see so many spam messages, you ask, mm -hmm. how did this person get my mail? Mm -hmm. you know, so I want to also come down to data privacy as well. And you as a, as a data expert, mm -hmm. how can organizations and also individuals safeguard their data from these um, villains, as I, mm -hmm. as I would call them, these, hack these hackers? OK, so um, let's look at it uh, in these two ways, okay. right? what you as an individual can do mm. um, before and then after, okay. right? In 2012, um, the Data Protection Act was passed. Yeah. Now, by that law, any company that interacts with data has to come under the regulation of the Data Protection Authority. So you need to register and then get your certification. So you don't operate on your own? No, okay. you don't. So, um, and a lot, the, a lot of the misconception out there is that you only need to do that when you're interacting with data from outside. Oh, okay. But external data. External data. Okay. But that's far from it. Mm. Even internally. Mm. Because let's take an example. If, you, if you're a business, you have staff. Now, all of these staff will give you their banking information for payment of salaries and things. So you have their contact numbers. Mm. All of that is covered under. So even for internal data that you collect from you know, internal actors, you, you still need some level of regulation. Mm. So um, there are some rights that as individuals we have accrued to us under the Data Protection Act. Mm. The first thing is that in giving out your data, you need to find out what your data is going to be used for. Mm. A lot of the time, you go for conferences and seminars, you have a yes, sign-up yes. sheet, you put your email sign address, up, yeah. your contact number in there, and there's no indication of what your data is going to be used for. Yeah. Is it going to be shared with sponsors of that event? Is it going to be shared with any other uh, you know, partners that they have that you're not aware of? Because sometimes you tend to receive messages. Strange from, messages, yeah, yes. From random people. Uh, just uh, yeah. about a month ago, there were text messages flying around. I don't know if you, uh, you got it or any of your viewers got it. Um, a job offer, getting 100 CDs a day. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so they, you know, they are... That you should click the link to, to yes, to another yes, portal. Yes, yes. So you have to be very, very careful mm. uh, of all of these. So okay. one, you need to find out what your data is going to be used for. Okay. Two, you can also find out, even after the data has been collected, how it has been used. Mm. And the company or what we call the data processes, okay. the, the body that is collecting your data. Okay. And you give me a data, you are called a data subject. Mm. So the data processes are mandated to give you that information. Mm. You can also request that whatever data that you have be stopped, like they stopped using, using your data. Wow. Yes. So okay. there are a lot of you know, rights that uh, accrue to a lot of people don't know about mm. it. Mm. And you can visit the data protection website to find out more about you know, some of the rights mm. uh, about that. Yeah. Right, Very interesting. So finally, what are some tools that we can use to you know, safeguard ourselves from being hacked. Are there some tools out there? Okay. So, um, in addition to tools, another way that hacks happen is through our behaviors, mm. right? So, in addition to having these softwares and these tools that you use to protect yourself, you also need to check yeah, your behavior as an individual. Mm. I'll give you an example. Sometimes you're in the office, everybody has an account they used to log in. Mm. And you are out there somewhere, and somebody says, "Oh, I want to this document from your your desktop." You yeah. give them the, your account <laughs> <laughs> password. You're, you have exposed yourself you. exactly. Yeah. So, one when it comes to our uh, credentials that we used to log into those platforms, we, has, we must keep them. We must keep them strictly uh, confidential. Mm. Two, there there are other ways. When, like for example, this platform we are logging in. There's something that we call multi-factor authentication. Yeah. So the second, second layer of yeah. security that's added. So you log in, and then you have a number that's tied to your account. They send you an SMS with a one-time code. Yeah. You enter it. So in that access, you have some you know, level of security. Mm. So we need to take all of these things seriously. 
another behavioral um, factor that opens us up today says sometimes you have 20 accounts, you have difficulty in remembering you passwords, remember so you password. use one password for all, for everything. <laughs> for everything. If one that, person knows that password, there, you, chances are that you're using the same password for all your accounts. Exactly. So that is also a, a bad practice. Mm. We must also look at stop. We must also stop saving passwords in our in our browsers. Mm. That's also you know another way that the hackers can find a way to. They want to get that your browser, the, yeah, your browser history, history mm. and then they have that information. Mm. So those are terms of behavioral um, you know um, factors. In terms of tools and platforms, um, especially to to solve one issue of you know having one password against all, mm. there are tools. One that readily comes to mind is Bitwarden. Bitwarden. Yes. So okay. Bitwarden is like a vault. So okay. there are various kinds of vaults that you can save various passwords in. Okay. And then you have one password to access that account. Okay. So you can have so your password email within the password. Yes. Okay. So you have a vault. You only need to keep one password, mm. and then your email account will be saved in there your banking information will be saved in there mm. all of you know all the accounts that you need you, you know access to in terms of uh, authentication mm. you can save all of that there mm. so if you need to log into your email you just log into your your vault, your vault and, then and then you pick the email. password and then you know you paste it in there and then you log in Very so yeah so there are tools like that and um, you know, the basic one having an antivirus to detect malicious you know softwares mm. a lot of the times too we tend to like to download Free softwares. Yes. <laughs> yes. We don't like to pay for licenses yeah, to do yeah, software. So all of these, you know, opens us up to, you know, attacks. Great. Mm. I've, been, I've, had, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you. Yeah. And many thanks for sharing that with us. I've been speaking with Kwesi Kofi from DataWare, and we've been talking about the dangers of hacking and how to tackle them. He's been my guest on this week's edition of Vistech. Many thanks for watching. My name is Maoli Aholemeka. Thank you, Maoli Aholumega, for that report. And I hope you've also learned a thing or two from this. Up next is Biz Headlines. To our very first story, governments will be looking at receiving an amount of $3 billion for over three years from the International Monetary Fund once an agreement on the program is reached, this is according to international news agency Bloomberg. The, the portal reported on its website that the new amount requested as a loan was double the government's initial target of $1.5 billion. Ghana's government is in talks over a loan of about $3 billion from the IMF, according to two people familiar with the matter. The amount is double what the West African nation was considering a month ago as it tries to shore up its finances and win back access to global markets. The funding will be provided over three years, the people said, asking not to be identified because the talks are still in progress and public announcements have not been made. Calls to the finance ministry spokesperson didn't connect, Bloomberg added. An IMF emailed response to the news outlet also indicated that it was early to comment on the subject, maintaining that the executive board of the Bretton Woods Institution will also come at the right time to speak on the matter. It will be recalled that the government on July 1st made a U-turn on a strong position of not seeking support from IMF amid an economic downturn. A team from the IMF arrived in Ghana on July 6 and engaged Ghanaian authorities for a program aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and safeguarding debt sustainability, among others. International credit rating Fitch has downgraded Ghana's credit rating from B negative to CCC. In a report cited by Ghana Web, it's noted that the downgrade reflects the deterioration of Ghana's public finances, which has contributed to a prolonged lack of access to eurobond markets. This, Fitch said, has led to a significant decline in external liquidity. The rating agency further that, in the absence of new external financial sources, international reserve 
will fall close to two months of current external payments by the end of 2022. Meanwhile, government of Ghana has run to the IMF for financial bailout. A team from the IMF arrived in the country on July 5th to engage government officials for a possible bailout. The IMF program is aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and safeguarding debt sustainability, among others. The Ghana city is still the worst performing currency among African currencies, with the worst port returns, according to Bloomberg. The city recorded a negative 28.82% depreciation to the dollar as of August 8, 2022, to sell at nearly nine cities to a dollar. This means the currency could be heading for a record in the last 25 years. The low performance of the city has driven inflation to a record of 29.8% in June. However, despite the revenue the country is enjoying due to the high price of crude oil on the international market, the city's depreciation has led to the increasing prices of petroleum products. On August 5th, Standard & Poor's global ratings downgraded Ghana's foreign and local currency credit ratings from B negative slash B to CCC plus plus stroke C with a negative outlook. According to SNP, the downgrade is due to intensifying financing and external pressures on the economy. Inflation for July has hit 31.7%. The Ghana Statistical Service has announced. This means that between June 2022 and July 2022, prices of goods and services have gone up by 31.7%, indicating a 1.9% increase. Government statistician Professor Kobinaini made the announcement when he addressed journalists on August 10th. GPRTU has introduced a mandatory vehicle towing system for its members. According to the General Secretary of GPRTU, Gofred Abubiri, the move which will take effect in October this year will help reduce road crashes in the country. He noted that any driver who fails to subscribe to the mandatory road toll levy will be blocked from loading within GPRTU terminals. In an interview with the media, Gofred Abubiri mentioned that a total of 2.6 million vehicles have been targeted for this exercise. He stated that per the payment regime, taxes will be charged 50 cities, Trotro will be charged 80 cities, long buses 300 cities and articulated trucks 500 cities. The GPRTU on Tuesday, August 9th, launch a mobile application that would capture the details of all drivers and their vehicles to facilitate the operationalization of their service. This was in partnership with the private entity, Road Safety Management Service Limited. <music>